So this is a very important question, which is why do CAR T fail? It repel almost 80, 90 percent. Some in some cases, over 90 percent patients respond. But for example, Idacel currently the PFS is um, nine months. Now, yes, these are very advanced patients. The median line of treatment patients are received before were six. But still, with somebody getting deep responses, why do they relapse? So if we understand that, we can improve the benefit of CAR T cells. So in an effort to do that, we have begun to do this. And this particular publication that we had, um, it was from a very unique patient. It's a one patient example, but it highlights what could be one of the mechanism of resistance. This is a patient who got CAR T cell, had a very good response, a VGPR, more than 90% reduction. After nine months, patient relapsed and we gave the same CAR T to the patient again and did not respond to that. So why did patient relapse and why did second CAR T cell that worked first time did not work second time? So we had eight different samples from this patient before the first CAR T, during the CAR T, at relapse and after the second CAR T. And we did single cell genomics on this sample. And we did not find significant difference in the immune profile of this patient. Immune cells did not change significantly. However, when we looked at more carefully the myeloma cells, we recognized that the 16P the arm of the chromosome where BCMA is located was deleted on one side. And the second chromosome 16P where BCMA is there, there was a mutation which inhibits production of BCMA. So in, in, in functional aspect, the patient as the myeloma cells were stopped making BCMA. So loss of the target end up being a potential cause for drug resistance or, or CAR T cell resistance in this patient. This patient ended up getting another BCMA targeting treatment later on because we didn't have this data and did not respond. And so that's what, what is predictable. So I think the importance of this study is that loss of BCMA could be one of the potential mechanism. We believe it's not very common. There are anecdotal cases. As we treat more patients, we'll get more data, but this seems to be not the commonest cause, but one of the still possible cause for BCMA loss. It has significance because those patients should not get any of the BCMA other than BCMA targeting treatment, either uh, BCMA ADC um, and blend rep or, uh, or the bites. Um, now, so, so the patient selection would, would be impacted by this. Um, the other part is that um, we still need to find out why majority of the patient relapse and uh, their responses stop. And so I think that's the process we are in and at, at the moment to understand what are the immune mechanism uh, leads to patients relapse and or lack of total removal and elimination of myeloma cells from the body. I think the, one of the important component for um, uh, going to the next stage, because uh, uh, till we cure the disease, we got to find improved treatment. And so knowing CAR T works very well and the immune system works well, the bites works well too. They're, they're not yet in the uh, commercial setting yet, but we have very good data from multiple other bites that they do provide significant, similar to CAR-T efficacy in many patient populations. So now other targets are being evaluated from the immune point of view. And if you look at what those targets are, they are the ones which are the molecules which are expressed specifically on surface of myeloma cells and are not expressed or are not functionally important in other cells. The, the one which has now gone further to having both a bite and a CAR T cell being investigated is a molecule called GPRC5D. And that's an exciting second molecule um, that you know, will provide us a, a good immune targeting. There's another one which is moving forward is called FCRL5 and another target that is also uh, going forward for some of this mechanism. Um, and, and so besides this, there are certain other standard myeloma related targets like CS, uh, so uh, the CS1 or SLAMF7, which is being investigated. We had investigated NKG2D previously. And so, and then CD38 and CD138 are also targets, although their focus has not yet been CAR T or BITE yet. So that's one component of it. The second component to keep in mind to improve 
the efficacy of CAR T and other similar is to now change various aspects of the product itself, not just the target, but the product. So it can be that we could have two targets on the CAR T cells. We can produce CAR T cells with more memory phenotype, like culturing them in PI3 kinase inhibitor. Um, there are CAR Ts which has gene edited uh, knockdown of PD1 or the similar. There are allogenic CAR T cells, so we don't have to make CAR T for each patient. You can take it out of the bottle. Um, and then there are concepts of peptide stimulated T cells being used for vaccination, et cetera. And then we also have other mechanism. Uh, for example, if we decrease the shedding of BCMA, then there'll be more BCMA on cells on the myeloma cells. Um, uh, using what is called gamma secretase inhibitor, and you can increase efficacy. And then using CAR T at an earlier stage of the disease, and quite importantly, using some maintenance treatment so that the CAR C can, T can persist and provide better cytoreduction and possibly a long term disease control. And so these are various CAR T related newer methods being uh, evaluated for immune mechanism. There are many other targets under investigation for myeloma not immune to one, but protein degradations using ubiquitinizing enzyme targeting or, uh, or um, uh, uh, proteasome uh, uh, receptors uh, being targeted. There are many genomic and um, uh, um, what do you call the mutation uh, targeting agents uh, such as bemurafenib and trametinib being investigated. So these are already ongoing studies, but focused on immune function, which is what has been the most successful recently. There are lots of new targets being evaluated.